which is continue to win and win and win and win, okay? He knows what he's doing. And if he doesn't get reelected in November, the country's done. We are 100% done if Donald Trump is not reelected in November. The country is gone. And this is not a, like a typical loss like, okay, George Bush is running against Bill Clinton and we got, you know, okay, the Democrat won. This is not what's going on here. You see the radical criminal lunatics, thank you, Christine, that are doing all these things that they're doing on top of the invasion that's going on at the southern border. And these people will only be stopped by Donald Trump. Like, yeah, I'll give you a great example yesterday. Um, I, I talked for about a half an hour about the dangers of TikTok. It's in the news again today. And then at the end of the show, Rick, we call him Rick the Felon, our old board op, you know, the, you know, from the Hurricane Andrew days. He called in yesterday and said, well, Trump's using TikTok. And, and, I, and, I had a, and I said, yeah, he's smart. You know, to, he can't ban it. It's there. He's working with Charlie Kirk and Vivek Ramaswamy to get the youth vote out and the youth vote do what it is they do through uh, TikTok. So what President Trump is doing with TikTok, as bad as TikTok is, he's using the enemy lines of communication, that's the CCP, to win this election. So those are, the, um, those are the kinds of things that I'm talking about. He does, you know, and it, I know people will say, well, you know, with, with all of these, with, you, know, you know, I've got principles and all this stuff. If we lose the country to these Marxist, un-American uh, communists that are organizing this invasion of our country, what do these other things matter? They don't matter at all. And this year, from now through Election Day, now that President Trump is the nominee, there are going to be people that he picks to be around him that you don't like. I may not like them. I don't trust Vivek Ramaswamy, but we need Vivek Ramaswamy. He's a great help to us. There will be others. Okay, there will be others. And um, you've got to make compromises if you want to save the country. So don't, don't question him, Donald Trump. Don't disagree with him. And whoever he surrounds himself with, he knows what he's doing. He knows what he's got to do to get elected more than any of us. This, this miracle of winning the nomination that he's done, I don't, you know, the, the media, I was, I, was, I was following the media's reaction to it this morning. They're reporting it, but they, not for long, and they move on to something else because they don't want to highlight how miraculous President Trump winning the nomination actually is what he's gone up against, what he's defeated, who he's defeated. And they're still coming after him. I mean, you've seen this story of these fake Republicans that are going to spend millions and millions of dollars to try to defeat Donald Trump from this point forward. Think about that. See, what, the, what, what they're fighting for, I was, I was talking a little bit about this yesterday, what they're fighting for is to maintain control of the Republican Party. The Republican establishment are comfortable losing the election, including the control of the House, so long as they control the party still. And the Republican establishment is on the verge of collapse. They're a small little cell. They're like Hitler in the bunker right now, desperately trying to hold on to power. So we're going to take the first break, and uh, now that Trump's our nominee, you know, uh, I, I do want to hear your thoughts on this, and uh, it's it's an, it's just an exciting time, people. This is this is a time more exciting than uh, I can describe. Our number is toll free one triple eight four six five twenty six thirty one triple eight four six five twenty six thirty one. We'll be right back. 
Thanks, Christine. Sent me a text. The, it, uh, the uh, mic was muted for YouTube there in the beginning. I just had to, I, I took the uh, camera off and turned it around and hit a button. I don't know why it was muted, but it was. So I appreciate that. To Christine, who sent me a text. Where am I? Oh man, I got a busy day today, guys. Someone said there's no compromising with libs. I'm not talking about compromising with libs, but uh, President Trump knows what he's doing. And you have to trust in him to bring this home. Oh, I can hear my stomach growl. I don't know if that if you guys can hear that or not. My stomach is growling. It made a noise. Ugh. Oh yeah. I um I am probably going to not be able to stay up and watch. I I cannot handle suspense. Hillary's not coming into the race. Biden's the nominee for the Democrats. Trump's our nominee. Just refresh the page, guys. Refresh the feed. Just refresh the page, guys. I'm doing a little sound check myself there. I am so hungry this morning. I'm, ugh, I can't eat before the show because it makes me tired. Oh, that's good, Debbie. Michelle's not going to swoop in. All right, welcome back, everyone. It's Wednesday, 18 minutes after the hour. I'm Brian Craig. It's the Steve Kane Show. You know, yesterday, I've talked about this uh, a couple times on the show. Um, yesterday, uh, right before I went on the air, I was in the car in the parking lot here at the radio station. I got a text from uh, someone that um, a, a friend of mine a very good friend of mine, my my closest friend that I've been friends with since I was a, very young, <laughs> uh, was was dying, was in the hospital and was on death's door, and um, and uh, they did not die and uh, they're not they're okay. I talked to them, you know, the person yesterday, and I just I I throw this out I. I put my phone and text and everything on do not disturb for most everyone, but I, when I'm on the air and in the mornings, but I keep my t 
there's a couple ways that some people can contact me. My inner circle of people can contact me because I, you know, something that my wife needs me, if my daughter in LA has a problem and things like this. But because I get up so early in the morning, people text me at 3 a.m., 5 a.m., 4.30 in the morning, 2.30 in the morning, 2 a.m. I get weird texts from people at all kinds of times of day, uh, early morning hours and everything else, because everybody knows I'm up. And unless it's my wife, daughter, or immediate family, another immediate family member, please don't text me that someone's dead or dying, okay? I just, you know, because I got to do a show. And, you know, and yesterday, I got to tell you, yesterday's show um, was a bit of a blur. I do remember doing the show. I remember talking about a couple of things. But yesterday's show, I, I was a little out of sight, out of mind because of, uh, of this news. And, what the, and you know what they did? Just, I just throw this out because I guess it's the best way to let everybody know instead of doing a massive group text and sound like a jerk. Um, they, they sent me a photograph of my friend in a hospital bed, and they, they look like they were giving, getting the last rites. It was that bad. It was that bad. And I'm like, oh, what, you know, why'd you do that? Why'd you do that? I, you know, because, you know. And then imagine you get news like that, and then you got to do a, uh, a three-hour show on the air. It's, it's, it's just, this has happened before. It's not the first time. You know, I've gotten news that's very tragic and bad right before I go on the air. Save it till nine in the future, guys, okay? I really don't have much of a recollection of yesterday's show at all. Um, I know we talked about different things, and I remember a little bit of it. But for the most part, I have no recollection. I, I really can't, at the top of my head, I can't even recall it, any details of a conversation I had with a single caller or Steve or anyone on yesterday's show. But uh, unless it's, it's my wife, daughter, or an immediate family member on death's door or dead, don't text me about it until 9 a.m., people, okay? Please. Uh, it's very difficult to do a show. You've heard me talk about this before, you know. Get very difficult to do a show after getting information like that. All right. So uh, President Trump's now the nominee. And <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, President Trump's now the nominee. And um, the first two things, well, I'll, I'll say this. When I was talking in the first segment that he's going to do things, say things, and, and surround himself with people on occasion that we don't like, the first major chance that this might happen will be his choice for vice president. You know, it used to be back in the olden days, a vice president would be picked by someone because they could help them get a state. Or, and you know, like Kennedy picked Lyndon Johnson because he could help him get the Southern vote. When President Trump picked Pence, I, I mean, I never liked Pence, guys. I talked about that at the time. I, uh, Pence always creeped me out. He seemed very fake, very phony. Uh, I don't like a man whose true personality you can't see. I don't like people that are too polished, you know. But he's going he's gonna to pick a vice president. And this may be the first time that some people will say, why did he pick this person? There's a good chance that he picks someone that you don't like. Because the person that Donald Trump picks, we don't know who it's going to be. Everybody's got all these lists and wish lists. We don't, you know, President Trump did say a couple months ago he's already made his choice and it won't be a surprise. Well, I don't know. You know, a couple months ago, lots happened since now and then and that his, his mind could have changed for all kinds of reasons. He may very well pick someone that you and I don't like. I, as You know, like, for example, um, Vivek Ramaswamy. I don't trust Vivek Ramaswamy. I would say as far as I could throw him, but he's a skinny little guy. I could probably throw him pretty far. A little guy. But if he picked Vivek Ramaswamy, who I don't really care for, I, I mean, I, he's likable and all, but I don't trust him, I'll back it. 
because President Trump will have a very good reason for picking Vivek Ramaswamy. Okay, do you understand? Do you understand what I'm saying? So the the, the vice everyone's going to now since he's the presumed nominee, he now has enough delegates that the nomination should be just a formality. But don't trust these guys just to give up. You know, um, he might. I, I give you another one. Um, uh, Tim Scott. I, I like Tim Scott. But when he gets on stage and talks, he gets weird. He, he, he sounds like Arsenio Hall in Coming to America when Arsenio Hall's doing that black preacher thing. I mean, he, he just gets weird on stage. I'd back it. Okay? Because Donald Trump, whoever he picks for vice president, he has a very good reason for it. It may be because he knows them and trusts. Like, I, I, I'll tell you, you know one person that's being talked about for vice presidential pick that we haven't talked about. You know who? Kevin McCarthy. And none of, no, MAGA voters do not like Kevin McCarthy. I, I don't, yeah, that guy, he's the worst. But I've noticed he's been at some of the Trump rallies uh, recently. And he hasn't made a big deal about it. But if he picked Kevin McCarthy, we'd have to accept it. Whoever Donald Trump picks to be his running mate he will be picking them for a very good reason. Like I said, maybe it's loyalty. Maybe they have the ability to help him get something done that he's got to do right away. Maybe, like, like Vivek Ramaswamy. I don't, I don't trust Vivek Ramaswamy, but if, if Donald Trump picks Ramaswamy, it obviously would be because they've done some massive polling and he's hugely popular with the youth vote and we need the youth vote, okay? So these are the kind of things I'm talking about. We're talking about saving our country. We're talking about saving Western civilization here. This country is about ready to become South America. And I don't mean uh, because it's becoming less white. That's what Joy Reid and all these MSNBCers want you to think. They are transferring South American criminals and peasants to the United States and they're bringing their culture with them. They're not assimilating. So whatever Donald Trump believes he's got to do to win, you and I have got to back it. And now we're going to really start to get into it because now today the talk is going to be who's real talk about who the vice president's going to be. All right, we're going to take our break for the bottom of the hour. I'm Brian. It's the Steve Kane Show. Back after this. I'll be back, guys. I have had so much water today. Be right back.
All right. Elon Musk cannot be his running mate. He's not a uh, natural-born U.S. citizen. Yeah, I don't know why people uh, text me bad news early in the morning. It's like... All right, we'll be back after this commercial, last commercial. All right, welcome back. I'm Brian. This is Steve Kasher. I just saw this story. California study. Attempted suicide rate among men who had gen gender surgery was twice as high as it was before the operation. I wonder if it has anything to do with them having their penis cut open and turn into a vagina. That, that seems to have an impact, okay? I, if that's too irreversible. You know, I don't even have a tattoo. It's too permanent of a decision for me to get a tattoo. I almost got a tattoo a couple of times, too permanent of a decision. Um, and so getting back to not questioning Trump, I want to finish up on this because it's important. I, I'll give you an example. This is a big one. Abortion. I am as pro-life as it gets, okay? Pro-life as it gets. So is Donald Trump. You know, Donald Trump overturned Roe v. Wade. Roe v. Wade would still be the law of the land if Donald Trump had not overturned Roe v. Wade, right? That's a fact. But Donald Trump has said recently that there should be exceptions for rape and incest. And the conservative pro-life position is, well, it's not that unborn child's fault that it's the product of rape or incest. In fact, um, we had, who was the woman she was running in Pennsylvania? I forgot her name now. Who said she was, um, her, her father was her mother's rapist, right? Remember that? I cannot remember her name. She ran, was running in, she was running against Dr. Oz, remember? I've forgotten her name. And, but Donald Trump has said that there should be an exception for rape and, and incest. And, you know, a lot of people that are pro-life MAGA, that's like a deal breaker to them. It shouldn't be. He's as pro-life as you are. Maybe even more. I mean, he's the one that overturned Roe v. Wade. I don't know anybody else who's done that. Only Donald Trump. So if he says there should be an exception for rape and incest, you got to go along with that. Now, by the way, if you agree or disagree with what I'm saying here, you're welcome to call in. The number's toll-free, 1-888-465-2631. 
888-465-2631. Give it, you know, I remember during the first campaign is when the, um, this transgender stuff started happening with the bathrooms. Remember, Target was allowing men to use the ladies' room and the dressing rooms. And Caitlyn Jenner, formerly known as Bruce Jenner, um, did something really weird. And, well, Donald Trump did an interview with, uh, with a couple of people. I can't remember who the interview was with. It was on a stage. It was an audience. He was on stage sitting with them. And they said, could Caitlyn Jenner use the ladies' room at Trump Tower? And he said, yes. And I thought to myself right then, I said, uh-oh, the evangelical Christians, the Baptists, they're going to freak out. This was like during the primary phase, if I remember correctly, of the first campaign. And Caitlyn Jenner went to New York, took a cab or an Uber to Trump Tower and videotaped using the ladies' room. And no one stopped him. And, uh, you know... And I, and I thought, oh boy, but you know what? Even though he took what, what's considered to be a very liberal position on that, the evangelicals came out and endorsed him after that, okay? Because they knew. You know, when, um, uh, I remember when Mitt Romney, before we knew what a freak and a snake he was, when he was running against Obama, I remember getting call after call on the program from conservative Christians who would not vote. They, I'm not going to vote for Mitt Romney, they would say. And Mitt Romney uh, lost Florida because millions of Christians in Florida would not vote for him because he's Mormon. And I remember saying to callers, when, when they would call in about this, and this, I know it seems petty, and, but this was a big deal at the time. It was 2011, right? And, and people would call up and say, I'm not, I, I can't vote for a Mormon. Mormonism is a cult. Can't vote for him. And um, thankfully he lost now, though, because his loss eventually led to Trump coming down the escalator and all of that. But we didn't know about Mitt Romney then. Okay, everybody, every, all the Repo we were all supporting him. And I would say to those callers, you're not going to vote for him because he's, a, he's, he's Mormon. They would say, no, nope, can't do it. Mormonism, it's a cult, can't vote for him. And I'd say, well, which would you rather have running the country, a Mormon or a Muslim? Because if you don't vote for the Mormon, you're, in effect, voting for the Muslim. And that still didn't even get through to them, right? Millions of Florida Republicans did not vote. They left that blank on the ballot. Many stayed home because he was Mormon. Um, before that, I, I remember uh, Giuliani was running in the Republican primary. He got creamed. And um, we had him on the show. We had Mayor Giuliani on the show the day of the Florida primary. And he knew he was going to lose that day. But he came on anyway. And you could tell. I mean, he was like really shook up. I mean, he... He was almost as shook up as he was on 9-11. He was really upset, Giuliani, because he knew he was going to lose, but he was going through the motions. We had him on the show here. And um, Mayor Giuliani, I, I remember he, um, he, he, he lost the primaries around the country because evangelicals wouldn't support him because back when he was mayor of New York, he was in favor of some gay rights legislation, which I can't remember what it, what it was, okay? Um, but it was probably something that Donald Trump supports today. I, I don't know. And he lost the primaries because of that. And I remember talking to people at the time. You know, you're not going to find, and I'm not saying that these things apply to Trump, okay? Trump is going to make compromises between now and November because he is running to save the United States. He's not just running to win an election. That's not why he's running at all. He's running to save the United States, to save our culture, to save our civilization, which is going to be lost if he's not reelected in November. But I remember talking to callers during the Giuliani primary phase, because we we're strong supporters of Giuliani. Steve and I had dinner with Giuliani, where I really embarrassed the hell out of myself. I'm not going to tell that story again, but, you know, I bet you Giuliani remembers that dinner because I made such an idiot out of myself with Mayor Giuliani. But anyway, uh, <laughs> you know, it's life. 
you know, these embarrassing things make it more interesting. You remember it. If it wasn't for me making a fool out of myself at dinner with Mayor Giuliani, it, I probably wouldn't remember much about it either. But um, I remember talking to um, callers at the time who says, I will never vote for Giuliani. I don't care what he did on 9-11. He was in favor of gay rights in New York City years ago. And he did something where he also dressed up in drag. I can't remember all the details. It's been so many years. I can't remember all that. It's not important. But I said, listen, okay, Mayor Giuliani, he's a New York Republican, so he's liberal on some things here and there. But Obama's liberal on everything. So, you know, you, you, you've got to compromise in life. That's, that, that's sadly what life is. You, it's compromises. And every, if you don't compromise in your life, you know what you're like? You know, if you don't, if you don't make compromises in your life, you know what you're like? You're like these liberal jerks that live alone in apartments that have no wives, kids, girlfriends, or nothing. Just alone. Right? That's, what, that's, that's how you end up. Life is compromises. So when, when Donald Trump comes out and says there should be an exception for rape and incest, I, I don't agree with that. You may not agree with that. I know I don't agree with it. I, I don't believe an abortion should be legal, period. But, but he said it. He said it more than once. He knows what he's doing. Okay? There's a lot of women out there who I guess that's still a big thing for them, or at least Donald Trump has internal polling telling him so. So, you know, this is not 2015 here. Things were bad in the first campaign, but not like now. That was more of a general election. This is a fight for the survival of the United States as we know it. You know, so you're going to have to make compromises. And if there were people out there who refuse to make compromises, I won't vote, you know, the, these never Trumpers that come back out of the woodwork, you know, tune them out and really question whether or not they're MAGA. Because I'm here to tell you, they very well may not be if they're taking positions like that. All right? Okay, now I want to hear your thoughts on all this. And, and basically what I'm doing um, uh, is giving President Trump, a, 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 in my, a, a, just clear him of anything he does between now and November. Because he's got to do what he's got to do. Right? I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. I, I, if you're with me or not on this, I want to hear from you. Because I, 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 I would hope most of you agree with me. Maybe you don't. I'd like to hear from you too. I'd like to hear your logic on both sides of this. The number is toll free, 1-888-465-2631. one 465 2631. Now, I want to tell you the free shipping continues at MyPillow.com. I checked right before showtime. Free shipping site-wide with our promo code Kane at checkout. No matter what you order, no matter how large, no matter how small, no matter how light, no matter how levi- uh, heavy, free shipping with our promo code Kane, K-A-N-E, site-wide at MyPillow.com. Plus, you get the special deals. So, it's massive savings. In fact, this is probably the, the largest savings that we've ever been able to offer on my pillow, and this is free shipping on everything site wide. So, load up. We'll take our last break of the first hour and be right back. Hard. I got to run to my car.
same location and offering great deals on new and used tires. I have many suppliers. Whatever car or truck you have, I can get you incredible deals on any tire. I also do tire repairs at very low prices. Give me a call. My number is 954-977-9445. I will give you a price over the phone on new and used tires. Again, my number is 954-977-9445. Thank you. Hey, good morning, Brian. I couldn't find my uh, car key, and I had uh, I left it on the sink in the men's room. All right, call us on hold standby. I'm Brian. It's the Steve Kane Show, Florida's longest running radio show. One triple eight four six five twenty six thirty one. One last thing, uh, and I mentioned this last week on the on the air. Um, there's a lot of, of Democrats that are voting for Trump. If you hear someone who's not MAGA, not a not typically a Trump person, maybe even a Democrat. And they say they're voting for Trump. Don't start giving them a hard time about their positions on anything. We need every vote. All right. So don't give any of these people grief. Don't argue with them. Don't alienate them and change their minds. All right. All right. Let's go. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, this is this is Richie. Hey, Richie. You're 150 right. You know, when President Trump was in New York as a businessman, New York is so liberal. Everyone knows that. He had to do things that were against his belief. But to get things done for his business, he compromised. And I had an uncle that had a business, okay, up in New York. Let's forget this. I, I got next to him and he said, oh, this guy was coming. He owned, he, owned a, he owned a gas station and he owned a tire company. So this, somebody was walking towards him and he says, I hate this guy, I hate this guy, I hate this guy. The guy approached us. He shakes his hand and says, how's your wife? How's your bed? And then, then he walked away. I looked at him. I said, what? What? I thought you told me you hate him. He says, I do, but I love his money. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> you have to do things. You have to compromise in life. If you're going to be so stringent and strict, and first of all, he's going to represent the whole country. He's just not representing America. He's going to represent... Well, no, no, no. He's got to get... You know, Here, here's the thing. You know... None of us have ever had a president who's, who uh, has had two non-consecutive terms. It happened once before. Nobody was alive then, right, that's alive today. So, so most of these guys, all they're concerned about is getting reelected. That's a concern that Donald Trump is not going to have. Um, it doesn't mean he wants to lose the midterms and he wants to be able to pick the, his successor, but he doesn't, have that, he doesn't have that re-election concern, and he's got some serious business to do, like seal up the border. And, um, he, and if, if the border's not sealed, our country is lost. So, you, you, you know, Ron, Ronald Reagan said that if you're with us 80% of the time, you're in the Big Ten of the Republican Party. Yeah, you know, and Ronald Reagan said that all the time. Uh, uh, let me ask you a question. There's two, there's two rumors out there. One, one rumor was, was Nikki Haley was going to run with Biden and they were going to drop come up. No way, no way. Uh, now that was one room. The other, the other thing is this. Let me ask you honestly. And I watched that Stephanopoulos interview on Sunday. 
I mean, I was in shock, but I was cheering her on. I know Nancy Grace has had her or had her issues, but you want to have her. I've seen her on War Room. She is a, a, a woman, a, a, a fighter. She's young. She's attractive. And she endorsed Trump. And they try to put her on a spot, and she's stuck with it. I think she, and, and she, she was raped. And she could reach a lot of women out there, a lot of women that would love her. I just think that she would be an excellent pick for him. My guess is she'd be on the she'd be on the list. Now there's one thing with her. After January sixth, she was trashing Trump. But you know, but that, but a lot of people did, you know. I mean, I you know, I mean, you know. Uh, Nancy Mace would be good. I mean, yeah, I she I would be yeah, yeah. She's a fighter's eight boy, I'm telling you right now. She's like I said, I am sure you see her woman a lot. She is one tough cookie and will not and she's honest. She's blatantly honest, like Trump. I mean, a lot of people say Trump's not honest. He's yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and she would be, to me, an advocate. She would go, the, the women would love her. I, I, and, and that's a big problem. That, that the only problem we have is the female vote, because we're going to get the male vote. We got it last time. We got it the last two times. I'm, I'm telling you, if you get the women you need, you're going to have to have some, and she's strong. I, you know the uh, you know the thing about in, in inflation. You know there's a, a a trend going on on social media today, which I I just found out about this a few days ago, and it's it's women. They're on it's on every platform, Twitter, um, YouTube, everything. Women that are married, women with kids are there's this whole trend going around about feeding their family shopping at the dollar store, which is you know. And yeah, yeah, and and I mean buying like you know trying to uh, you know I saw one thing a woman was trying to feed her family on on twenty dollars you got to, all these kids are from dollar store for days like almost a whole week and that that's something that's being done out of necessity that women that are responsible for preparing food for their families um, are they're acting like women during the Great Depression so all this talk on Fox that Trump has a, a problem with women. I don't agree. Um, women um, are struggling to feed their kids. They're shopping at the dollar store for food and, and nothing wrong, you gotta do what you gotta do. I mean, I wouldn't wanna eat the dollar store food, quite frankly, um, myself. I wouldn't wanna feed that to my children. Yeah, you know, it's not against the law to sell outdated uh, food, by the way. Um, but, but regardless of this, I think women understand how bad things are in this country economically under Biden than than most other groups of people, and I think what's going on 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 with these news women, I think most of them or a lot of them have had abortions, and that's a big issue to them because they never wanted to get pregnant and be on TV, so they make it a big issue. I think most women are struggling to feed their families, and uh, we don't have a problem with women. I really believe that. You know, well, let me tell you this. Yesterday, I went to public service, and both of us buy one get one free. When Trump was president, orange juice, I don't care any brand, was two for five at Publix. It's now two for eight. That's a special. Yeah. It's out of control here. And, and, and it's getting really tough. I mean, fixed income people, people that, I think the biggest asset Trump has, believe it or not, is by, <laughs> he's, he's got to have the biggest asset because look at the difference in the two people. And yeah. And Trump seems to have changed. He's a little softened up now. I, I, I watch his speeches. He's, he's, he's kind of uh, easy going. I don't think it's. I don't think he's softened up. I think it's a tactic he's using. I think he's running a different type. He's he's not getting into petty conflicts with the press and 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 things like he used to. The statesman, statesman. And Correct. The other guy is a screaming old old coot, like you always call him. I mean, I think he's the best asset. But I like Nancy Grace, I'll tell you the truth. Well, before you, before you, you got to get her name straight. Nancy, it's Nancy Mace. Grace is that, uh, the, the woman that does the crime stuff. All right, take care, Richie. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Christy in St. Lucie County. Hey, what's up? Hi, I have a problem with politics in general with the fact that they pander to the lower percentage. I'm pretty sure if you poll. It's not the majority that would feel that way. It's the lower percentage that they always um, kind of lower the beliefs and morals and values, too. Yeah. 
that I have the problem with. I feel like you can compromise on something, but you do not compromise your morals and values. That's kind of what Trump. So, so, so you would you would be willing uh, not to vote for Trump and let Biden be president again because of some, of a position he compromises on? Well, I would have to really pray about it and see where. Well, give me an example. Like he's like President Trump has said that when it comes to abortion, there should be an exception for rape and incest. I, I do not agree. I don't agree with that either. But would you not vote for him because he says that he overturned Roe v. Wade? Keep in mind. Uh, and I, oh, I know, and I, I am very much. I, I'm, a, I love Trump. I think he's amazing in what he does. Would you? Would that stop you? Really. I don't know. I'd have to think about it. I have a really hard time. Well, see, that, well, I, no, I, I'm, I'm glad you called because, listen, Donald Trump is, is as pro-life as you and I are, right? He overturned Roe v. Wade. Nobody did that. Nobody even tried to do it. He did it. If he says there should be an exception for rape or incest, he's saying that it's, it, it, it means nothing. Roe v. Wade's been overturned. The abortion decisions will now be made at the state level, not the federal level. So he's saying that to help get elected. If you, if you d did not vote for Donald Trump because he said there should be an exception for rape and incest, you're going to allow someone who believes that there should be, that, that, that there should be abortions even post-birth with Joe Biden. So think about what you're doing with that. You know, are you really compromising? I have a hard time with Trump because I think the reason many people admire him is because of the platform that he stands on. So when he starts backtracking on that, I have a hard time. I, I don't, but he's not. I don't see that as a positive. Well, I see what you're saying now, and I like the fact that you brought that up because I wasn't thinking like that. Yeah. It does, I mean, between right and wrong, I always feel like you should do the right thing in the end, even though it might not appear to be the whole picture. I feel like at the time you need to do what's right. So that would be hard. But, 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 but this is, this is what you got to understand. Roe v. Wade, what Roe v. Wade did was stop the states from having abortion restrictions. Now, it was, it, that's what Roe v. Wade did. Now that Roe v. Wade is overturned, the president has no say in abortion. It's up to the individual states. So no matter what a president says, it doesn't affect what happens because it's up to the states. And Florida is going to do what Florida does. So, no, I, you really got to think, because if you, if, if President Trump picks someone, like, I'll give you a, I'll give you a great example, if, I, I don't think this would be the pick, but say he picked Nikki Haley to be his running mate, would that stop you from voting for him? I probably would not vote for him for Really? Either. So you would let Joe Biden continue to destroy this country with this land invasion because you don't like his VP pick. Think about that. I, I would have to, uh, you're right, I'd have to look at the whole picture. That, that, there's, that's it, I just gave it to you. I'm pro-Trump too. I, I'll, I'll tell you this, if he picked Hillary Clinton as his running mate, I'd vote for him. Oh gosh. Okay. Vice presidents have no power. Right, unless something happens to the president. And that's what I think about Florida too. We have DeSantis now. How long do we have DeSantis before things shift? Well, he's a jerk, DeSantis. He's a, he betrayed us. He lied to us all. You know, he lied to us all. You know, I, I don't know. I like Don Jr. to be our governor. Byron Donalds could be the governor next. That'd be awesome. All right. Well, hey, listen, I appreciate your call. St. Lucie County, that's where the documents trial is. Fort Pierce. That's right. I was out there for you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Yeah, she showed up at the courthouse for president. So you got to think about these things. You know, I'm, I'm glad I brought this up today. And if you're on hold, hang in there. We're going to take our break. For the top of the hour, my name is Brian Craig. This is the Steve Kane Show, Florida's longest running radio show. On the radio since 1977, celebrating 47 years on the radio. That's right. Our number is toll free, 1-888-465-2631. 2631 If you're on hold, stand by. After the top of the hour break, we'll come back to our phones and continue this discussion. There's a lot of other things in the news we're going to discuss as well, but Donald Trump is the nominee now. That's it. All right, we'll take our break for the top. I'll be back right after this. WSFS 104.3 HD3 Miramar. WIRK.
it's not. Oh, I lost my magnet there. All right, where am I? Now, I think we... The, what are your thoughts on what I've been saying? Do you agree or disagree in the chat? Agree or disagree? Yes or no? I would, I would hope most would agree. Now, I... I uh, I had my hands full when I came in today and left a bunch of stuff. No, good. Pretty much everyone agrees. I only see one disagree. Well, thank you, Robert. And yeah, Luna is, she's great. She's come along. When we first brought her home last year, I was afraid she'd never bond with us. Yeah, my wife and I, we spend a lot of time on our patio.
All right, welcome back, one and all. Callers on hold, stand by. We're celebrating Trump winning the nomination last night. one 465 2631 You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, Ben. It's, uh, uh, hey, Brian. It's Ben from Hey, Hey, Ben. What's up? Uh, not much. Yeah, I, I don't understand the logic of the last caller. I mean, essentially, we have two Americas, and you're going to get one or the other whether you vote or not. So either you get the America that Biden wants, which is complete destruction of the West, or you get the America that Trump wants and envisions, which is, I mean, if your if your main issue is being pro-life, uh, it's like I don't there's it's night and day between the two choices. So I don't understand people who decide to stay home because you're just not having a say in what's going to happen. That's right. One of the two things is going to happen, so you might as well have a say in it. It's just frustrating because I feel like there's a dedication and a fervency with Democrats. With our party, I think we're a little more independent-minded. That's why we see more infighting. But Democrats are hive mind; they vote like a block. Well, you know, I'll t I don't know that this is true for for the last caller because she's from St. Lucie County. St. Lucie County is one of the most conservative MAGA places in America, right? It's where Fort Pierce is, where the documents trial is. But here, you know, the thing about it is, a lot of people that a lot of our MAGA brothers and sisters have been red pilled. They used to be liberals not that long ago. And, they, and when someone overcomes an addiction, whether it's alcohol, drugs, women, or liberalism, every once in a while, they fall, right? If, if somebody's a recovered alcoholic, every once in a while, they'll stumble into a bar and have a couple of nips, right? Someone who's a recovered liberal, who's now MAGA, they, some of them still have a little bit of that cancel culture inside of them. And if someone disagrees with something, one thing, that's it. They, they want to cancel them. But the thing is, yeah, yeah go ahead. Well, it just makes no sense. Even if, even if she, he, or excuse me, Donald Trump picked Nikki Haley, I would still vote for him. Even though I loathe Nikki Haley, she's a, she's a Mitch McConnell, Mitt Romney type Republican, I would mm. still vote for it because even 50% of Trump's agenda is better than 100% of Biden's agenda. It's still a win. I like, And with her, she said she would pray on it. I don't know if she was ever a liberal, you know, unless she, like, turned to Christ, you know, not too long ago. It sounds like if she's a person of faith, I can't see how she could possibly be a Democrat. But it's just, it's, it's frustrating when I hear people like that because it's complete. And you did well, you know, you were actually trying to, you know, bring her around. Um, but, I mean, it's, it's infuriating when it's to me. It's just it's so illogical. It makes no sense. You're one yeah. or the other. Have a say in the one you want. That's right. That, I mean, you know that you're you're exactly right. And if you noticed, I didn't give her too much grief because when I was, one of the things I was talking about when when you have people that are on the fence and they may vote for Trump, Trump, you don't want to drive them away. We need them all. This this is this election. I know they always say it's the most important election. This is this is it. It's not a question. This election. I mean, we all knew. I we all knew in 2020. Yeah. People like you and me and who listen to the show, we all knew it. We just didn't know it would be this bad. We knew it would be socialism. We knew it would be open borders. We didn't. But when it actually hits us in the face, it's a whole new level mm -hmm. of understanding. And so, but this time, we know what this guy is willing to do. We know what, how much of a fascist he's willing to be and use the, the entire government to go after his enemies. So, yes, it, it's not an exaggeration to say this is the last election. If we don't, because we already, yeah. know, we already know what they're going to do in, in order to make it so... I, I get, like, 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 think about, like, think about this, okay? Everyone, all the, all the pundits, everyone knows that the number one issue that Americans are voting on is the southern border security issue. Biden is running for re-election against a very popular opponent, Donald Trump, and he still won't slow it down. Okay, imagine imagine what it would be like if he's re-elected and he doesn't have to worry about another election. I know, I know. I mean, and, and it, it's unbelievable when you look at her uh, testimony yesterday. This guy, if you read the transcript, he's he's completely checked out. He's yeah, slightly demented slightly senile, completely checked out. And you're telling me if he can't, he's so senile and pea-brained that he can't even be prosecuted? 
How can he be present? He's not running the show. He's an empty suit that mm -hmm. implant plants are running the show. That's, you think Biden ever believes in open borders? No. If he gets into office and all of a sudden the most radical policies ever are put into place, it's definitely not this guy running the country. He is just he is just an, uh, like a, one of those Machiavellian, go with whatever. He has no principles, no morals. He goes wherever the direction of his That's right. handlers are telling him. That's why it's dangerous. If it was Joe Biden on his record, it wouldn't be so bad because for most of his career, he at least just went with Democrats and they didn't start getting crazy. And mm -hmm. or, I, I don't know, like Obama, they just they just went all new, you know, communist Democrats. So, but man, he is not running this. Country. See, and the and and these past in these past elections. The differences between the candidates have never been so different. I mean, you know, when uh, Bush was running with against Gore, for example, Gore's literally because really, what did George Bush do that was all that conservative? I mean, not I can't think of anything, not socially at least. You know, I mean, remember that remember that farm bill thing he did in his first year before nine? You know, there was not in the old days before Trump. The differences between Republican and Democrat were few. Now, it's either destroy America or save America. It's, it's, that's it. It's a vast difference. That's, that's why I don't understand these undecided voters. If you're undecided, you just, you haven't opened a book. You haven't turned on the Mo Most, most, un m my experience is most people that are undecided are just narcissists who want people to beg them and plead with them for their support. It has to be something because it can't just be legitimate. I'm undecided. I don't know. Not knowing between one candidate or the other is like, I, like I can't even compare it to anything. It's like apples and washing machines. There's no difference or relation. Yeah, to you. You that's a good one. Then something's wrong with you. Yeah. All right. Well, listen. I appreciate I appreciate the call. Like, let me let me share this with you. Like, give, give an example. Okay. Um, this is in the Gateway Pundit. This is a story from yesterday. A U.S. federal uh, judge in a non-jury trial found Christian pro-life activist Stephen, I'm not sure how to say his last name, Lefemine, Lefemine, guilty of violating the Freedom of Access of Clinic Entrances Act after he sang the popular hymn, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, and recited Bible verses outside of an abortion clinic in Columbia, South Carolina. In November, or on November 15, 2022, he was protesting against abortions outside the Planned Parenthood South Atlantic in Columbia by singing hymns and quoting Bible scriptures. Shortly after his protest began, staff at the abortion clinic, along with police officers, asked him to stop blocking the entrance. He said he would only leave if they agreed to not kill babies today. At his trial, he represented himself. He cited the U.S. Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, and the Bible um, and, um, well, he's going to prison for six months, federal prison, and a fine up to $10,000. Um, and he's not alone. So we have in this country something I never thought we would have. We have persecution of Christians because of their religious beliefs. That's what they do in China, right? They put you in prison in China if you're a Christian. Now we're doing it in America the leader of the political opposition, Donald Trump, right? Arrested twice, mug shots, everything else. You know what's going on, okay? So, so you know, the, the things that are happening in this country, while they may seem like the new normal to a lot of people, there's been a drastic change in the past three years. Remember, uh, it seems like a long time ago, but it wasn't that long ago, the school board meetings in Virginia where Biden's Justice Department sent federal agents to write down the license plate numbers of the parents at the school board meetings, right, in the parking lot, so they could do backgrounds and investigate them. This is what the FBI used to do to the mob families. Remember, the, in the, if you watch The Godfather, the wedding in the beginning, remember James Gahan key, key, uh, finds the uh, federal agents out, outside writing down the license plates of all the cars that showed up to the wedding? Now they do that to parents who go to a school board meeting. The transformation in the past three years from a free country to East Germany is, is here. And if Donald Trump is not reelected in November, these radical Marxist dictators and communists 
that we're talking about here will take that as a mandate and they will quadruple down on what they're doing. So there's there's no there's there's no comparison between any past election with this one. We're going to take our first break of this hour. If you're on hold, stand by. Our number is toll free, one triple eight four six five twenty six thirty one. Triple eight four six five twenty six thirty one. I'm Brian. It's the Steve Kane Show. We'll be right back. Don't sit on the sidelines. Get on the action. Call the Steve Kane Show live on air now. Talking to Mike about something. All right, it's the middle of the week. That means it's hump day, right? Wednesday is hump day. You get over the hump, and then you're headed towards the end of the week. And if you're in pain, if you're suffering, if you have discomfort, you need to go and see Dr. Philip Appleton and talk to him about his laser away pain treatment. It works, guys. 
it will rid you of your pain. And, you know, the laser wave pain treatment, uh, I, in all of the instances, now this is just my personal experience and everyone's different, but in my experience, I don't think I've had more than two treatments uh, on the injuries and the pain I was suffering from and the pain's gone and has not returned. My shoulder was the worst. I, you know, that day, you know, I was talking about yesterday, someone texted me that a friend of mine was on death's door in the hospital, you know, right before I went on the air. When, uh, when I had my shoulder injury from my last skateboard accident, I, I told you what the pain felt like. It felt like Mike Tyson, in it, at, at his peak, had punched me on the side of my shoulder, side of my arm, and that I had a steak knife stuck into my shoulder while I was on the air and someone was trying to cut the muscle. It felt that bad. And uh, I went right after the show to see Dr. Appleton. No appointment necessary for anyone, not just me. Walk-ins are welcome, even on Saturdays. And uh, he treated me right away for it. And uh, when I was in the lobby walking to, out of his office, I was already feeling better. I went back for a follow-up. Uh, that was, I don't know, was it, a, it must have been a Thursday because I went back on Saturday. And, or maybe I went Friday and Saturday. I can't remember, but I had two treatments. Boom, shoulder pain gone. It has not returned. Give him a call. His number is 954-973-0710. 954-973-0710. And online, AppletonCairo.com. Go see Dr. Appleton and say bye-bye to your pain. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Fort Lauderdale. Hey, Fort Lauderdale. Hey, Brian. Hey, uh, you, you're an avid supporter of all Trump supporters, right? You're, you're no. No, I am not a. I am not a. I am not a supporter of all Trump supporters. I'm a supporter of Donald Trump. But we support Trump. Right? What are you? What are you going to find? Some you're going to. You, what are you going to try to do? Find a criminal and then get me to approve of their crime? No, I don't support all Trump supporters. No, no, no bro, bro, Brian. No, I'm just asking a simple question. But you, we're Trump supporters, but you're not a supporter of all Trump supporters. No, I can't. I can't agree to that statement. No. Or can you be a source of information? I don't, why, why don't you? Why don't you what, ask your question? I don't understand what your point is. I don't understand what you're asking. I mean, I mean, can we be a supporter? Can, can we? Can you be a source for us Trump supporters, right? For information, right? Well, that's. I guess I am a source of information. Yes, that is accurate. Okay. 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 So if Trump. Says Mike Pence as the vice president could have stopped the election. Why are you telling us? Yeah. The president has no power? Um, they have very little power. But you're telling us they have no power. I'm I okay, I miss I misspoke. They have very little power. Very little power. I corrected my statement. Yeah. I, I, I correct I, 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 I amended my statement. Vice presidents are not without power. They have few and limited powers and rarely come into play. So when you talked to that lady earlier, you told her what was wrong. That was wrong what you told her. So she, she just, no, no, it's not wrong what I told her. What did I tell her that was wrong? You said you said no. You said the vice president had no Okay. Do, do you, do you, okay. Okay. And I and I and I'm a Trump supporter, so I'm Okay, now slow down. Yeah, I, I know you sound like you I know you're super mega. Um I corrected my statement to you like three times. I said I will take that back and the the vice president has very few powers. So you telling the lady who called in that Well, yeah, listen, listen. That wasn't a private phone listen, that was not a private that is not a, oh my goodness, that was, okay, do you know what, do you, do you know what my name is? Brian. Correct, Brian, right, correct, Brian, yes, 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 Brian, it, it, excuse me, excuse me, my, my name, uh, sl slow down for a second, okay, my name is Brian, not Jesus, okay, I am not perfect, I do make mistakes, Okay, okay. Jesus was the only man who was perfect. We all misspeak. We just want to be on the same page as Trump supporters and that we're not eating each other. 
What do you mean eating at you? What are you talking about? I'm talking about what you told the ladies. The vice president has no power. I I said they have they have very few powers. Okay, I've amended my how many times, you know, maybe you just never admit when you're wrong and this is something that you can't compute. You went against what Trump said. Trump said that No, I did not I did not go against what Trump said. I didn't go I I did not go against what Trump said. I said now I have amended. How many times do I got to tell you this? I am amending my statement. Vice presidents have very few and limited powers. They, I mean, they, you know, listen. When there's a tie in the Senate, they get to be the tiebreaker vote. You know, they get to do things. You know, they can become president in, on, on rare occasions, but they have few and limited powers. I have amended my statement. So, so, so we can have Trump. Information about what you never, you never, you, you never, you never, excuse me, you, you never misspeak, you're never inaccurate, you're never incorrect. Have you ever heard of somebody making a mistake? Tell me, tell me, tell, tell me what you, why are you voting for, why, tell me why you're voting for Trump. Why are you voting for Trump? So Trump fails. See? Do you see what I'm talking about? Yeah. See what I'm talking about? No, no, no. I mean, I mean, you're just a, a liar. You've been telling me during this very strange conversation that you're MAGA. And I, I say, uh, and, and I want to translate your gibberish to the audience. I say, why are you voting for Trump? And you said, because Trump smells. Really, have you been close enough to him to smell him? Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. That's called nasal drip. See, you know, this is this is an interesting call. This is. Well, you're laughing at your own jokes. You think that was funny? What? Nothing you've said is funny. I mean, you're really a sad, you're a grown man behaving like a, a 12 year old kid. But you know, here's here, here's the thing, caller. You know, this is this is a great call. This is a, no, all right. Thank you for your call. This is a great call, and I want to tell you why it's a great call. You know why it's a great call? What? That is a beautiful call. He spent that whole time trying to tell, tell you and the listening audience he's MAGA, he's a Trump guy. Why did he do that? Think about it. Why did he do that? I'm going to tell you. I'm not going to troll for calls on why he did that. By the way, he held on for quite some time for that. He called before I, the bottom of the hour break and everything else, or the last break and everything else. He was on hold for a long time. We're coming up on the bottom of the hour break. Um, he knows that if he calls in and says, hey, I'm a Democrat, I'm a liberal, I support Biden, that he has no credibility. He knows that the only voices in this country that have credibility with the masses of people are people that claim to be MAGA. That's why he pretends to be MAGA in his call. All right, we'll take our break for the bottom of the hour and be back. Making morning radio great again. It's the Steve Kane Show with Brian Craig. I got an, I got an itch. What I've been doing, guys, is I, I'm gonna keep my mic on. My back itches, and I can't reach it, so I'm using the door jam to scratch my back. There we go. That worked. And now, a true oldies traffic check. Brought to you by the Palm Beach Kennel Club. Palm Beach Expressways are still incident free this morning, but we do have a crash in West Palm Beach. Bobby. Awesome, thank you.
Oh my goodness. <laughs> that caller. Oh my goodness. All right, we're coming back. All right, we're back 35 minutes after the hour. Callers on hold, stand by. You know what crazy thing about this show? You know, these callers are all real um, that we've had on the show, uh, not just today, but every day, all these years. We don't, you know, sometimes when we do appearances, people ask if we, like, have, like, people. No, that's scary. These, these are people that are out driving on the roads of South Florida that are calling this program. Um, before we go back to the phones, I want to talk about this her hearing yesterday. What a waste of time that was in many ways. 
Uh, I missed the beginning, but I heard all the members of Congress uh, thanking him for sharing his story. Who cares about his immigrant story? Who cares about how his parents... You know, there used to be this thing that was very popular that I used to see grandparents have. Sometimes it would be T-shirts, and sometimes they'd have a license plate on the, on the front of the car. Ask me about my grandchildren. I got news for you. No one cares about your grandchildren but you. It's not that we're cruel, but people don't care. That's why on 9-11, every year, uh, I'll tell people, no, don't, I don't wanna, I'll, I'll talk about 9-11, and I'll say, don't call in about your 9-11 story. Nobody wants to hear it except you, you know? That's, you know, and, that, and this guy telling his family's immigration story, who cares? But this thing, her, um, there really wasn't a lot of new there. Things that we read about were to, talked about openly, but uh, it's a waste of time. I, you know, I'm, I'm not into these congressional hearings. They're, I'm just not, you know, and what happened yesterday is what typically happens because the, the witness is for us. All the Republicans are thanking them for their hard work and their dedication to public service. And then all the Democrats tell them what a scumbag they are and praise Biden and attack Trump. I mean, that, and when it's different, when it's a, a Democrat, the same thing happens in reverse. Congressional hearings are a waste of time, especially the House ones, because they're all up for reelection, you know, and, you know. But the biggest takeaway from that her hearing yesterday, uh, of course, Joe Biden's a criminal. Who, who illegally took classified documents and shared them with people. Read, read aloud classified documents to people without security clearance. I got a sneeze coming on, guys, so bear with me. <coughs> okay. Oh, boy. That was one. Hopefully, here comes another one. This is great. This is great. But um, uh, that is true. Joe Biden illegally took as vice president, probably a senator too, he probably has documents going back to Vietnam, right? Um, he illegally took classified documents and read them aloud to his biographer. We know this because the biographer said so, you know? So why is there a double standard? You know why? It's because Joe Biden is a made man in the Washington Beltway political permanent Washington class and Donald Trump is an outsider. When you're a made man, that's it. He's like the mafia there. Okay, I, I, I think that hearing yesterday was a complete waste of time. It, it really was. And, and I, know, I, I, I know I probably have a minority opinion on that, but it's a complete waste of time. They all, as all congressional hearings typically are. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Good morning, conservative Doug. Hey, Doug. Um, I listened to that a little bit yesterday. I feel like... So this guy couldn't come up with anything that he did that, that was worth uh, uh, the charging him for. Uh, so what do you have to do to have the documents in your house and documents all over the place to be charged? Uh, uh, you have to be a Republican, I guess, because you're a Democrat or immune. Well, and this 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 whole thing about being feeble and checked out—that's for a, a judge. That's for a court to decide. You charge someone, and then a court can decide whether or not they're fit for prosecution. You just don't say because you're old and checked out you can do crime. I mean, would that apply? What if, what if he's what if it's a sexual assault? Well, you know, he didn't know. He's checked out. <laughs> I mean, really, and he's checked out. Another one. Well, what he can do to the State of the Union. You know, th th this guy. This whole thing was fixed from the beginning, I think. This guy was never going to, no matter what Joe Biden did, he was going to find him not, not worthy of being prosecuted, man. The, 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 the country is really in bad shape. I'm hoping this next election will yeah. MAGA people in there because these Republicans we have, like this Johnson, this fake MAGA Johnson, shake, bowing his head back and forth. Well, we got it. We got it. We got another resignation in the House. I mean, the Democrats might take over the House just because of these resignations and the, the expulsion of Santa. I mean, this is ridiculous. I, do we have a two or three seat majority now? Two or three seat. <laughs> this is nuts. Yeah, really. For next election, we better all be getting out and voting. Uh, for, for we let the Republicans get out of office, not that there is some... Ha have, you, ha have you voted for Trump in the Republican primary yet? 
No, I'll be expecting to do that uh, today. Okay. All right, yeah, you should definitely do it. it, it Hang it. Uh, I gotta say something, a little local news, if you don't mind saying something. This put this kid goes into my my daughter's school yesterday to visit. Uh, he used to go to the school. There was a fire drill, so he walks into the school. Oh, well, when they saw him without his ID on, they called the security officer. Four cop cars uh, come down. They they bring him out of school. They put cuffs on him and lock him up. Uh, I mean, it's good to be safe, but this kid wasn't doing anything wrong. He was. Just go and visit. He went in by mistake, and uh, I don't know. I, I mean, it's a tough, tough thing we have since that uh, the Cruz uh, got Nicholas Cruz. Nicholas Cruz, yeah, he, we never can do that. But everybody's on on thin ice. You you do anything wrong? And these schools and the police are out to make sure. Nothing. Well, the 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 reason that there's the reason that. Um, there's problems at these schools are many, but one of them is, is because here in Florida, um, the schools are so spread out. When I went to school up north, you know, you have one big school building. So, you, you know, and it, it's easy to regulate who comes in and out, right? When, when you have these open campuses like we have, how can you secure a school campus today? You can't. It's impossible. But the security officers are doing a good job. But they're, but they're going a little bit. You know where you know where I went to middle. I went to New River Middle School in Fort Lauderdale, and you, you, there, some kids came to school on boats because it was it's on the intercoastal waterway. And I mean the way I could the way schools are they're impossible to secure. I mean it's just you know so your kid. I mean that's just the way it is. I mean I'd, I'd be scared to death if. I had a kid in public school these days. All right, Doug, take care. All right, so um, some of the things that's going on. I mean, th this is insane. Have you seen this thing here? L listen to this. Biden is sending another $300 million in weapons to Ukraine. So here's what they're doing. They've been doing this for a long time. They, since we've got the, the House, they can't pass all the funding they want. So they're just giving Ukraine things that we already have. He's commander-in-chief. So he's having the, well, whoever signs for him, Jill, Jean-Pierre, whoever does it, um, Kirby, you know, um, they're just sending U.S. weapons to Ukraine that the Pentagon already has. Listen to this. So Biden is sending $300 million in weapons to Ukraine. The Pentagon has no replacements for them because they're blowing their funding. And is $10 billion overdrawn? What? Overdrawn? Let me read this. This is in the Gateway Pundit. It's the Pentagon's first announced security package for Ukraine since December when it acknowledged it was out of replenishment funds. It wasn't until recent days that Pentagon officials publicly acknowledged that the Pentagon was not just out of money to buy replacement weapons. They're $10 billion overdrawn. The Pentagon... Can't give away any more weapons away until Congress provides additional replenishment. So this is what they're doing. See, this is this is the kind of corruption that's going on in this country. And the, a lot of Republicans are probably involved in this. So since they give them just things the Pentagon already has in the different branches, the Army, the Pentagon, whoever, the Navy, they just ask Congress to send them more weapons that they're out. We need replacements. We need new this. We need new that while they're giving everything to Ukraine. What they're doing is illegally funding this war. You know, if you go back to the Iran-Contra arms for hostages with Ronald Reagan, you know, they made such a big deal about that. And what Ronald Reagan was doing was giving a few weapons to Iran. I, they say they were outdated. I, I don't know. I don't know how true that is. But what Ronald Reagan did was a good thing. He gave Iran weapons in exchange for American hostages. And back in those days, <clears throat> American hostages were being taken all the time and were being held for years and tortured and everything else <clears throat> all over the world. They even were killing some of them sometimes. And that was such a big scandal on how they were mishandling funds to give a plane load or two of what they said were old, outdated weapons to Iran. Here you have Joe Biden, who his Pentagon in the, is, is giving unlimited mil, uh, weapons to Ukraine every day to the point where the United States is low on a lot of things and they're, uh, $10 billion, they're, they're bouncing checks. 
Where's the, where's the press coverage? You know, was, was the media always this way? It's hard for me to believe that they were always this way. Was there a time when they officially were completely taken over by the deep state? You know, do these reporters want to have stories? Do they want to have scoops? Do they want to break news? This is, this is one of the biggest arm scandals in the history of the United States government. You can't just do that. You just can't give away weapons to another country to fight that, that's killing people in another country. You just can't do that. There, it's, it's, there, it's, a back, it's a crime is what they're doing. They can't get it through Congress, so they're finding another way. See, that's what I was talking about. Did you understand how, how much things have changed in this country? When Ronald Reagan did the arms for hostages, a couple plane loads of weapons, he had to jump through so many hoops and had to do it through a, a third party, that Agnon Khashoggi guy, who was the uncle of that reporter that got chopped up a couple years ago. All right, we're going to take our last break of the second hour. It's the Steve Kane Show. My name is Brian Craig. Our number one, 888-465-2631, 2631 We'll be right back. The cold, hard truth. Unbelievable. DeSantis is an incompetent jerk. He really is. I mean, he's a complete failure, Ron DeSantis.
All right, and remember, free shipping continues at MyPillow.com site-wide with our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E. I checked right before showtime today. Plus, you get the special deals. No matter how large the item, no matter how small the item, no matter how heavy the item, no matter how light the item, free shipping site-wide with our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E, at MyPillow.com. Great time to load up, and um, I got to order a couple more pillows because I want to um, uh, take some on the cruise. And uh, I, I always take my my pillows on the cruise. The one time I didn't, it was a mess. It was just a mess. So, <laughs> got to get my special my pillow cruise pillows, and I got to get uh, from my daughter. My daughter's bringing a friend. I'll get them my pillows too to take on the cruise. Why not? Free shipping, and there's huge discounts site wide on everything. So load up at mypillow.com with our promo code Kane at checkout. All right, Ron DeSantis is the biggest failure of a governor that this state has ever had. Okay. Um, he's lost everything. He's lost everything, right? Disney whooped him. Don't let anyone tell you. I'm not going to go through that right now. Disney is stronger than ever because of Ron DeSantis. Now the don't say gay bill, we just lost that. Everything. Listen to this. What, what has DeSantis won? This is in the Sun Sentinel. You know, I'm reading this online. The Sun Sentinel used to be like this big newspaper. It was thick and everything else. I've seen the Sun Sentinel print edition. It is so thin. My high school newspaper was about the same thickness as the Sun Sentinel these days, and that's not an exaggeration. Listen to this. Uh, A Florida parental rights law uh, may soon lose a lot of the controversial elements that led critics to give it a well-known nickname, Don't Say Gay. Now, the Sun Sentinel is a liberal, very pro-gay newspaper, by the way, always has been. The state of Florida reached a settlement Monday that provides new guidance and removes what lawsuit plaintiffs uh, describe as the most discriminatory interpretations of the law, known as parental rights and education. The law bans or restricts instructions of sexual orientation and gender identity in public school. While the original language never specifically banned gay-straight alliances, library books with gay characters or gay projects or LGBTQ subjects, the law's vague language led to different interpretations. Um, The superintendent of Broward County says he's very excited. So listen to this. They have like a QA and a here. Will teachers be able to teach about LGBTQ topics? Answer. The law remains in effect that bans classroom instruction on sexual orientation and gender identity in in, in, in gays. I said gays. I meant to say grades, uh, K through 8, and limits it in high school. In what context are you talking about sexual orientation and gender in 9th through 12th grade in a classroom? That's appropriate. Um, do mentions of sexual orientation, okay, um, the statute restricts classroom instruction on sexual orientation and gender identity, not homosexuality, and transgender identity, the settlement says. So Florida has made a settlement with these activists. For example, it would violate the statute to instruct students that heterosexuality is superior or that gender identity is based on biological traits. So you can't say someone's born a man, a woman, a boy, or a girl. Still not allowed would be a teacher saying, all right, guys, today we're going to talk about heterosexuality or homosexuality. Uh, Do any mentions of sexual orientation or gender identity in class count as instruction? No. Incidental references to LGBTQ people in classroom discussions are allowed, the settlement says. Oh, yeah, you did a great job, DeSantis. Class discussions and schoolwork are not considered instruction, even if the student addresses sexual orientation or gender identity. Teachers are free to respond and answer questions if students discuss their identities or family life. Oh, yeah. What what is DeSantis 1? Will library books on LGBTQ topics be allowed? Yes. Yes. Library books not used for instructions don't fall under the restrictions of the law, the settlement says. So they can have gay and gender affirming books in the school library. Uh, Are teachers allowed to talk about LGBTQ family and display pride flags 
or a safe space sticker or a photo of their same-sex partner. Uh, the law does not prohibit references to their families, whether gay or straight, transgender or cisgender. I, what, what, I, I don't even know what that is, cisgender. Uh, the statute does not restrict gay and transgender teachers from putting a family photo on their desk. I bet you the gays have more family photos in their classroom than others. Safe space te- uh, stickers, which teachers put up to oppose bullying and show support for LGBTQ students, are not prohibited, so they're allowed The settlement is silent on whether teachers can display pride flags and rainbow items as part of their decorations. Gay-straight alliances are allowed. Um, Does the settlement impact laws that ban transgender girls from playing on girls' sports teams and transgender students from using the restroom that matches their gender identity? Um, No, those bans were the result of laws separate from this. Okay, so... They, you know, so we got that. Uh, will teachers be required to use a student's preferred pronouns? No. Uh, can school boards pass resolutions in support of LGBTQ students? Yes. And it goes into some details on that. I mean, you know, what, what, what does this have to do with schooling? You know, we didn't even have sex ed when I was in school. Did any of you guys have sex ed? We didn't even have sex education in school. And it doesn't belong in school. It's up to parents. It's up to families. And um, we didn't have openly gay teachers. I had a home economics teacher that was a lesbian. And we found that out because she was on the front page of the Sun Sentinel. This is when I was in high school at um, a gay pride parade or something in Fort Lauderdale. And her and my math teacher were on the front page together with the gays. So I, we, we knew they were lesbians. We didn't know if they were a couple or not. I can't remember their names. But... Um, yeah, I mean, you know, this, the reason I share this is anyone, a woman called earlier and she's like worried about losing DeSantis as governor. What has DeSantis won? I know he says a lot of things, but he keeps getting whooped. We don't have open carry in Florida, which he promised we would have by the end of his second term. We, we have concealed carry without a permit. Okay, I want it open carry. I don't carry mainly because we don't have open carry, okay? Um, there's other reasons too, but that's a big one. So he didn't do that. He just lost the don't say gay bill thing. He lost that. He lost to Disney. What, what, is, what is the major accomplishment of Ron DeSantis? I saw a story on the local news last night talking about the homeowner's insurance on how people are, some people are like losing their houses over the cost of homeowner's insurance now. Because of that condo collapse in Miami and uh, the hurricane that hit the West Coast a couple years ago. What's he doing about that? The only thing I hear Ron DeSantis doing is conspiring with never Trump or Republicans to screw over Trump more. That's all I hear about with Ron DeSantis. He's a failure as a governor. Not just a disappointment. He is a complete failure. I wonder what his per, uh, preferred pronouns are since he was wearing high heels for the better part of the year, running for governor. Does that make him trans? Maybe. I don't know. Does, does wearing high heels, even if they're hidden in special shoes, does that make you trans? I don't know. I don't know. All right. We'll take our break for the top of the hour. Two hours down, one to go. My name is Brian Craig. If you can think of something that is significant that, uh, that uh, Ron DeSantis has one on, I'd like to know. I mean, I, as far as I can tell, he's a complete failure. one 465 2631 888-465-2631. Back after this.
fight for reparations. We're on this campaign to be able to get black Chicagoans not to have to pay property taxes. We ran Reconstruction Era Reparations Act now founder Howard Ray Jr. says the push for reparations is for those who are descendants of slaves. His team says slavery took away the ability to free... All right, welcome back. It is the third hour. I'm Brian. You're listening to The Steve Kane Show, Florida's longest-running radio show on the radio since 1977. We're celebrating Donald Trump winning the nomination last night, which is just a complete miracle when you look at everything he's been up against. And uh, I'm going to move into some other topics, but you're welcome to call in about that at anything I brought up since 6 a.m. Our number toll-free, 1-888-465-2631. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, Palm, how you doing, Brian? All right, West Palm, what's up? Hey, congratulations to President Trump, first of all. And with your question about the Sanders, the only thing that I ever saw that he responded good was the COVID response. Really? He shut down, um, I, I, really, he shut down the uh, border of Florida with uh, Georgia and Alabama and had checkpoints at the borders and, and all this stuff. No, he shut us down. I'm not saying he's not a tyrant. I'm saying that his response in Florida was good. What? Okay. But, but he was running against Joe back in was it 2016. Mm-hmm. We, we, we went to Bradley's because President Trump had endorsed him. And there was a fundraiser at Bradley's for him. And I stood next to this man. And I looked at my nephew who was attending with me and said, man, he's a little fella. I know, uh, yeah. I looked. I was up to my shoulder. I mean, literally up to my shoulder. And I'm only, I mean, I'm not a tall guy. I'm about five foot eleven. Mm-hmm. He is a very, very short man. And uh, the congressman, the veteran from uh, St. Lucie, or Martin County, uh, Brian, whatever. Br- Brian Mast. Brian Mast was there too, and Brian is actually taller than him. But without. You know, Brian, uh, Brian Mast, um, you know, he has those Terminator legs, you know, <laughs> you know, that he has on. I saw him at a Trump rally walking up the steps to go to the stage. Oh, my goodness. I mean, I, I, uh, I know a lot of people don't like Brian Mast. When I saw him walk up, those sta- uh, up the stage, and the television cameras were not on, by the way, uh, I couldn't believe how much effort it took for him to walk up five stairs, it, it, you know. I mean, I'll never criticize that man. After he did it, so we could stand next to Trump, right? We we uh we went there to support Joe. Uh, not Joe. Oh my! Because of and because Donald Trump supported and endorsed the Sanders. Yeah. He's a Bush Republican. He still is, and he always will be. Remember where he came from? He came from the swamp. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, listen, his greatest accomplishment is getting Donald Trump to endorse him. And, and, and Donald Trump did save us from Andrew Gillum while plugging this guy in. But, uh, you know, and I know he says all the right things and everything, but he, the don't say gay bill, he lost on that. He lost to Disney. You know, my insurance went up last year and this year it went up another, uh, it went up another $2,400 this year. I had to sell my house last year because of the insurance rates. Really? Where do you, where'd you move? I, I sold my, my residence in West Palm, and I bought a mobile home. And uh, how much did your insurance go up? It basically, it went up from like $2,800 a year up to $6,800 a year. Wow. I never had a claim. And when I called my insurance agent, they said, that's the way it is. Yeah, and there's no, you, you know, you call up your, there's no competition. What's he doing about that? That's causing more financial problems in this country than especially in these condos where they get they have to do all these upgrades because of that collapse in Miami plus the insurance with the seniors he's checked out you know he, when listen when he when he won re-election Ron DeSantis abandoned us in Florida yep pretty much pretty much and it's the insurance companies and big pharma and we are just a search Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you had to sell your home. I mean, you know, for because of DeSantis, you had to sell your home. Years in that house. Wow, it's crazy. All right, take care. Appreciate appreciate the call. Isn't that something? 
from 2400 to 6800 a year. I don't know how much mine went up last year. I know how much it went up this year because it, it, it's another 2400 I don't want to know, really, because what, what, I got to pay it. What am I going to do? You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Jeff, uh, Florida Keys. Hey, Florida Keys. What's up? How much? I just uh, bring in on your DeSantis failure, gay. Yeah, ask what he did to the specialty contractors in the counties. I don't know. Tell me. That eliminated county licensing for contracts. And what what impact does that have? I don't know, I don't know about that stuff. Well, what happens is, is your county tells you you can't pull permits no more, can't sign on to jobs. Oh my goodness. So you know I had a license forty years. Yeah, they did manage to carve out from it, but it just goes back to his not thinking. But you know, you know what it is with DeSantis. It's it's a little more detailed than it, he's a Bush Republican. He's he's only worked for the government his whole life, right? He's only worked for the government. He doesn't understand what the real world's like. Yeah, so it's like in my county alone, four hundred and ninety businesses. Affected. That's crazy. What, what? Where? By the way, you're in the Keys. Where? Uh, how are you listening to us in the Keys? On the radio or online? I was watching YouTube. Oh, you're on YouTube. Okay, where in the Keys are you? Uh, Mile twenty-two, Wow, you're way down there. <clears throat> you know the keys. When I was a kid, my grandmother had a house on Plantation Key. I wish the family still had it; It'd be worth millions of dollars. The keys, the keys used to be like a like just a regular place to go to. Now you got to be like a millionaire to live down there. Oh man, that's crazy. I know. That's crazy. We lost that old feeling. <clears throat> I know it's uh, for lunch 150 bucks in Key West. Oh my! Hey, listen, I got a bad connection, but it's good to hear from you from the Keys. Yeah, I haven't been to the Keys. I haven't been to Key West in years. <clears throat> You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, Brian. It's Roz. How you doing? All right, Roz. What's up? Uh, three different things. First of all, you get the most craziest callers, and they're so ignorant. And, you know, getting back to what that lady said, it's like, if you're a Christian, how can you vote for Biden when he's for abortion up to nine months, he's for transgenders, you name it. It's like with him, anything goes. And that's not from God. And two, on the Ron DeSantis thing, he's failing because he... They have Donald Trump in the back. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump helped him, and when you somebody helps you, you are, should be loyal to that person and very mm -hmm. grateful. Mm -hmm. He even said on interviews, I don't owe him nothing. Oh, really? Well, now look what's happening. What you sow, you reap. That's the way the ball bounces. Well, he's a complete failure, and you know he said all the right things, and we liked him. But now we're now here we are five years into him, and all these all these all these good things he said uh, he's lost everything because he's because he's an incompetent lifelong government worker. Yeah, and you know another thing too that was real dirty what he did. He got the law changed so he could actually run for president and state governor. Correct. Yeah, and he was doing that when they were starting to talk about, oh, he's on a book tour. Uh, I knew it was baloney. Mm -hmm. Doing in private, running for president. Now. Exactly. Feeling. And you know, when he signed that bill into law, it wasn't even in the news. They did, like did it in, in in secret. Right. And another disappointment for me, I always used to listen to Chip Roy. You know. Oh. Yeah. That. And then he was on an interview, and I don't know if it was on Fox, this was a long time ago, and I think it was Neil Cavuto, and he said, yeah, this lawfare against Trump, it's not right. And Chip Roy's like, yeah, it's not right, but I'm voting for uh, Ryan DeSantis. And I noticed that he was with him at CNN, sitting next to Walmart Melania, and he went to everything that he spoke at. Uh-huh. That's right. And I think that, you know, I thought he was for Trump. And after I found that out, I'm like, I don't care for you anymore. I thought he was a decent guy. 
No, he's not. He's indecent. He's indecent. No more quick thing, and I'll let you go, because I know you have other... Sausage about President Trump stinking. The person who started the rumor is Adam Kissinger, mm -hmm. the, one, the one that got booted out. And I watched an interview with him about two weeks ago on MSNBC, and I forgot if it was Joyce Reed or whatever. I can't stand that woman. But anyway, they said, well, what does he smell like? And he was laughing, and he's like, well, put ketchup with makeup and B.O. and a soiled diaper together. He said nobody can uh, bear to stand to be with him. And let me tell you something. Listen, I never got with President Trump. But to me, he looks very clean all the time. And I don't think if that were the case, his wife would tell him. Hey, let me tell you, if the... If that were if that story, which is absurd, uh, the reality is there's been reports that Joe Biden wears adult diapers and you can smell it. OK, and that's and that that's true. That's been I've, I've seen people say if if that if that absurd slander of President Trump were true, believe me, people would be talking about it all the time. He makes he makes personal appearances nonstop. Adam is very jealous of Trump. He was jealous of him when he was in Congress. And I think. They need to bring back Madison Cawthorn. He was a decent guy. And George Santos. Yeah, I agree. I don't know why they're gone. They both should be uh, in Congress still. Yeah. All, all right, Roz. That's right. All right. Thanks for the call. All right. We'll take our break and be back. Don't sit on the sidelines. I had this audio clip I wanted to play. I think I lost it. lost the audio I was going to play. Uh, those who I very much disagree with politically feel that I think it's meaningful that even, the, <laughs> at least in their rhetoric, uh, those who I very much disagree with politically feel the need to talk about freedom because that gives us actually a shared vocabulary as divided as we are. Oh my gosh, that guy booted judge in a failed state. It's telling, right? We can't really identify. The soundbite I wanted to come back with, I've misplaced. So I can find it. Six 
Four seconds. All right, welcome back, one and all. I'm Brian. It's the Steve Kane Show. You know, Ben Shapiro said yesterday people shouldn't retire. Well, that's easy for him to say. He's first off, he's a young guy. He's a millionaire many times over, and he's got a whole squad of people that take care of everything. He has to do nothing. All right, <laughs> you know, yeah, he's already retired, Ben Shapiro. He just doesn't know it because he's arrogant and full of himself. But um, when it comes to retirement, you want to talk to Joe Thomas, Jupiter Joe Thomas. He's a retirement expert. And he's offering free phone consultations for listeners of this program. No matter where you are listening to us from, you can take advantage of the no-charge consultation with Joe Thomas. Talk to him about annuities. You know, with annuities, not only are you guaranteed income in your retirement, but your money's not at risk. Your money is safe. It's done through insurance companies. And I, I learned this through Joe. I did not know this. Do you know during the uh, stock market crash, the Great Depression, no insurance companies failed? I did not know that. That's amazing. And this no-charge consultation, you got to understand who you're dealing with here. You're dealing with a guy who's a top retirement expert. He's been in the retirement planning uh, business for over 30 years. He's a five-time qualifying member of the Million Dollar Roundtable, which is achieved by less than 1% of all financial advisors, not in the country, in the world. So give him a call. His number 561-743-0999. If you're already retired, Give him a call. If you plan on retiring tomorrow, today, or in 10 years, give him a call. 561-743-0999. 561-743-0999. If you missed the number, just go to his website, jupiterjoe.com, and you can grab it there. Um, more reparations talk. I, you know, this thing about reparations is insane, but I wanted to play this, talk about it a bit. This is out of Chicago. Uh, there's a reparations movement up there, and uh, they got a plan on how to get them. Okay, listen. We have a problem uh, where our black citizens in Chicago are being kicked or forced out of Chicago and they're going to the southern states to live comfortably. Bree Rand says they want all black Chicagoans who own property to be exempt from paying property taxes. The group wants to make this a referendum on the November ballot. They say they will use census data to track descendants of slaves who would qualify for this regardless of financial status and that voted into action would last for generations. We have talked about 400 years. In 2019, Evanston took the lead with the nation's first municipally funded reparations program for formerly enslaved residents, $25,000 each toward home improvements, a down payment, or mortgage assistance. We have so many areas of harm, therefore we're gonna have many, many forms and, uh, and remedies that are gonna be required. But taking the first step is very important. According to the 2022 Census American Community Survey, the black home ownership rate in Chicago is the lowest of any other racial group with just 35% owning homes. It's what Ray Jr. says the referendum will fix. We need to be isolated, taken care of, brought up to park, and then brought back into society. Watch. Okay. You know, th this is really, uh, this whole thing of reparations, uh, the, the reason I share this is this kind of explains the mindset of these lunatics that want reparations. You hear what they said? African Americans did not have the ability to pass down generational wealth. Radical black activists that support reparations think that all of us that are white have trust funds like the Kennedys or something. They, 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 they think this. It's a racial stereotype. I've seen other radical black liberals talk this way. No, we do not all have trust funds. We have not, not all inherited anything. I wish that were true. I mean, I wish I was born with a trust fund and had everything handed to me and was born rich. I, you know, Steve's a different story. Steve, you know, 
Steve went to John F. Kennedy's high school, so Steve was born rich. But I wasn't, and you know what? Most people that are white were not either, but they've got this stereotype that we're all the Kennedys, and that's where a lot of this comes from. But, uh, but another thing he said, he said, blacks are leaving Illinois and coming south to like Florida. Why is that? He said to make, so they could make it. You know why? We don't have state income tax in Florida, that's why. They have state income tax in Illinois in these northern states to pay for all their liberal crap. And if they, if they pass this thing, which they very well may pass it because they're, they're going to get it on the ballot, what does that mean? That means everyone else, their taxes are going to go up. It's just a, really a stupid thing. It's a stupid thing. All right, let's go. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Jersey Mike from West Palm Beach. Hey, Mike, what's up? You guys keep on doing it. Great show again. I really enjoy it. Well, you thank you. Always. And, I, and you know what I, I like about you most? You don't let anybody get away with anything. Yes. You, you call it the way it is, and I don't care. Now, what they say to you, even when you get very excited and angry sometimes, I hear that come through. You still don't let them get over on you, which I, I admire about it. Well, thank you. So, let me talk about Donald Trump. You know, a lot of people may not know this, but he's, he's done a wonderful thing for uh, veterans a, a number of years ago when he was in office. A lot of veterans were dying as a result of coronary difficulties, a heart attack, and they had appointments that were set too far off in the future with the VA. And what would take place is they would die before they got to see their doctor there, wherever it may be. And uh, he went ahead and got put into law a statute that says if you are 28 days or longer on an appointment, the VA must send you in to see another professional mm -hmm. outside of the VA. And that saved a lot. Of well, have you had to do that? Have you done that? Is that easy to do? Uh, well, not not necessarily. It takes a little bit of manipulation, but having been a Vietnam veteran for all these years, I figured out very well how to actually end up. Doing By the way, are you? Let me ask you. Are you? Let me ask you. Are you a Vietnam veteran or a Vietnam era veteran? Vietnam veteran. I running a 50 caliber uh, machine gun on. Okay, because I, and let me, I, that, let me tell you why I, I bring this up. This, this, this Vietnam, I've, I've talked to Richie about this. He's a Vietnam veteran. He, you know, uh, Richie the bus driver was an army, an army cook on the front lines in Vietnam. But, yeah, but, um, yeah, I know. And, you know, but here, here's the, but, 12 cents an hour. You know, they got this. They got this thing of Vietnam era veteran, which is really disgusting. And the reason that is, is, um, you know, it's so that people that were in the service at that time and did not go to Vietnam get the same benefits as the Vietnam veterans did. And it's really, it, it's really, I know they served in the military, but it's, it's really stolen valor. It's stolen. It's, it's a form of stolen valor. And I see guys sometimes wearing hats. You know, I'm a, I'm a Vietnam era guy. Baby, I, I lived during the Vietnam War. I didn't go. I mean, I find it, I find it to be stolen valor, and I, I don't like this that, at all. Yes, and it's disgraceful. It really is. And guys that really know what's going on can't stand those people. They know what they really are. Well, it started. Who was that? Who was that senator that President Trump always makes fun of that that claimed he was in Vietnam, then he was, and it turned out he wasn't. So he started saying he was a Vietnam era veteran. Yeah, I can't remember his name, but I know who you're talking about. There's another detail. You know, and I, a lot of people don't know about that one, but that's true. Yep. Yeah, it's disgusting. It's disgusting. Yeah. All right. Appreciate the call, man. Take care. We'll take our break for the bottom of the hour and be right back. Making morning radio great again. Cindy, that's awesome. Thank you for that. Cindy Maloney. Appreciate that. Blumenthal. That's right. Blumenthal. I always forget his name. Blumenthal, you are correct. Where am I? I'm watching this um, 
Lady Four Star Marine Corps General. I'll share this when we get back. I'll share this when we get back. <clears throat> This lady, four-star Marine general, she's not the commandant, is she? She can't be. General, let me look her up. She's an army that look like a, look like a oh no, because they got the new uniform. No, she's an army general. By the way, new Patreon member, Mole Man, welcome. If you'd like to become a Patreon supporter, there's a link in the uh, description of the video. All right, we are back. I'm Brian, our number one, 888 2631 You know, I, I was watching this army, this four-star lady army general, and I, I'm not a sexist or anything, and I'm not trying to sound like one or anything, but she just kind of doesn't look right in this uniform. I mean, they, it doesn't, she's too small. You know, I'm not against women being in the service and being generals and admirals and everything, but I mean, it... The uniform fits, but the stars and the ribbons are too big for her body. I mean, she, it, looks, it looks ridiculous. It, it really does. I don't know how she walks around. She's got more ribbons on than um, a Soviet Union general. 
I guess she's got something to prove. But anyway, she uh, her name's General Richardson. If you, you know, she was on TV yesterday, and uh, you know she was testifying to one of the committees about the Haitian invasion that's about to begin. This new guy that's running. Do you know what the name of the new guy running Haiti is right now? Barbecue. And you know. What the Pentagon was warning Congress about this week is that there's going to be a mass migration of Haitians to the United States. First off, migration is if Floridians move to Georgia, okay? If you come from another country, that's not migration, that's immigration. But they don't want to say immigration because, you know, they want to say other things. But um, into Florida... Do you know how hard it is to get to Florida from Haiti? It's like over 700 miles away, and Cuba's in between. You know? It's far, and it's difficult. You got to get around Cuba. You got to get, you know, a lot of time. It's been a long time since there's been big waves of, of Haitians coming here. But it, it's dangerous, and it's far. It is very difficult. Now, every once in a while, some Haitians make it to the Bahamas, and then they come here, you know. But it's very difficult on your own to decide. I mean, think about it. I go to the beach here in Boca or Deerfield, and, I mean, how far out can you swim? And then you go out swim, and then you're all the way down another part of the beach. You know how difficult it is to get to the to, to get to Florida from Haiti. It's much more difficult than people realize. I, I remember when I was in high school, there were three Haitian immigrants. That I remember this story, and now I know it's total BS. They found them off the coast of Florida, the Coast Guard. There were three. They were on an inner tube, and all they had to eat was toothpaste. Now I'm sure they were on an inner tube and had toothpaste, but somebody brought them here and dropped them off. Well, anyway, the reason I bring this up is um, Florida used to be a toss-up battleground state. Florida went for Clinton, not Hillary Bill. Florida went for Obama, but it also went for George Bush, and obviously it's going to go for Donald Trump again. Remember what Rahm Emanuel said, never let a good crisis go to waste. So what's going on here with the help of the Pentagon and the U.S. government they're opening, it up. they're opening up a second front in the invasion of the United States. The first front is the southern border, where they're bringing all these people from through Mexico into the country. Now they're opening up a second front into Florida. Now, if you come here from the southern border, all you got to do is walk. If you walk long enough, you'll make it. You get on that train that they have and all that stuff. But to get, to get here from Haiti... Off the top of my head, I want to say it's over 700 miles. I don't know the exact mile. And when they say 700 miles, that's from the most southern tip in Key West. You know, it takes, if I left here to drive to Key West, it'd be a five or six hour drive if there's no traffic, right? So it's far, it's far, you know, just to Key West. So why are they doing this? It's because this is no longer a toss-up state. Florida is a solid red Republican state. Not only that, the population of Florida is growing so much. By the time of the next census, we may be the most populated state in America. Certainly, not, if not this one, the census after that. Florida is projected to be the most populated state in America, which means we have the most electoral votes and the most House seats. Florida always gains house seats every census because our population is always growing. And the electoral count that a state has is equal to that of the members you have in the House of Representatives. Used to be New York and California. People are leaving and Florida is becoming the most populated. So what they're doing is they're bringing people, which by the way, uh, we have a lot of Haitians in Florida. They're good people. But the people that are left in Haiti are cannibals, cannibals. people into voodoo, I'm not kidding, okay, uh, and, and criminals of all sorts. And they're about to start this mass migration. And I'm telling you, you're going to start to see more stories about this crisis in Haiti. And I was talking about this on the show uh, on Monday. Haiti has always been in anarchy as long as I've been 
in Florida. I don't remember a time really when it wasn't an anarchy. It pretty much always has been. There's been a few periods where they've had some dictators, but even then it's been an anarchy. You know, the, the dictator, they're just in charge of the treasury so they can steal from it, you know, like Biden does with ours with Ukraine. So what I'm expecting to happen is there's a buildup. They're starting to talk about it like they were in Congress this week to get us used to the idea of this mass wave of Haitians coming to Florida, of course, so they could help turn Florida blue again. Um, yeah, that's right. That's the, to turn Florida blue again. This is what they'll probably end up doing. They did this. They, they, they tried to do this a few years ago with Puerto Rico, and it didn't work. They'll send cruise ships down there and start transporting people here by cruise ships. They tried to do this with Puerto Rico that went after the uh, hurricanes. They sent, they sent cruise ships and brought over 200,000 Puerto Ricans to Florida. Now, Puerto Ricans are U.S. citizens, but, they, but they're Democrats. And they were bringing Puerto Ricans here, moving them mostly to central Florida, and they were trying to uh, get more and more Puerto Ricans to come here and get them to stay here. And the problem is most of them went back. Because Puerto Rico is beautiful, and they were they had them in Central Florida, which is is not nice. Now they're going to try to do this with the Haitians. So this whole Haitian crisis is a cover to turn Florida blue. Make no mistake about it. So uh, I feel bad for people that are in Haiti. I, I'm sorry, but they have no business coming here. All right, no business coming here, and they're doing it for one reason and one reason only. That, that's another reason that this election in November is so important with Donald Trump winning. You know, to bring all these Haitians here, that's a long process. This, and, and here we are, right? We're already in March. It'll be eight, we're halfway through March pretty much almost. So it's not something they're going to be able to do tomorrow. It's a long-term plan and Trump can stop it. But no, we cannot allow it. Now, I, and also uh, Mayor Pete, who's just a weirdo, was on MSNBC. Did you guys catch this? I haven't listened to Mayor Pete in a while. And they brought him out. He's talking about the election. I think it's meaningful that even, the, at least in their rhetoric, uh, those who I very much disagree with politically feel the need to talk about freedom because that gives us actually a shared vocabulary as divided as we are. Uh, you know, this guy, he uses more gobbledygook words and phrases. I don't even know what he's talking about half the time. Rhetoric. Uh, those who I very much disagree with politically feel the need to talk about freedom because that gives us actually a shared vocabulary as divided as we are uh, to really come back to what matters most. I think freedom is on the line. Obviously, women's freedom to make their own decisions about their own health and their own bodies is on the line right now. Uh, the freedom of families like mine to exist right now is on the line. Isn't this something? Freedoms of families like his to exist is on the line. So, uh, and then here the host, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mayor Pete, Secretary of Transportation, he just said if Trump wins in November, gay families will be outlawed. I, I missed that part at the Trump rally. It's freedom to make their own decision. By the way, what does Grinnell think about this, right? Who's the top advisor to Donald Trump who's gay? Health and your own bodies is on the line right now. Uh, the freedom of families like mine to exist right now mm -hmm. is on the line. I think part of why we see a renewed push in this anti-LGBTQ legislation going through the states is very much a situation of freedom being on the line. And, and you know, you have, you have youth in these states who are different. And for as long as there have been people who are different, there have been government officials demanding that they conform and be like everybody else. Oh my goodness! So gay, gaydom will be outlawed if Trump's reelected. I this remember I was telling you yesterday they were talking about they made up this lie that Trump said he's going to cut Social Security and Medicare. This is that old playbook Rush always talks about. If the Republican wins, Social Security and Medicare gone, cut. Now gay will be made illegal. Gay families will be outlawed. They're they're getting really desperate when they're bringing out these old talking points. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? I'm Ricky from North Carolina. Yeah, Ricky. Hey, um, no, uh, I just got back on your on your uh, on your live just that's kind of work. But anyways, um, I want to I was gonna go back to where we were talking about. Uh, like, I would I, I would vote with Trump no matter what. Like, um, me too. Uh, but um, he uh, but the whole abortion the whole abortion thing. Like, my opinion, like you know, like did you mentioned earlier about we can call on about it, but uh, it's like when does like a life 
not when does a life not matter anymore? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, from a from a, like, you know, I'm I'm a I'm a Christian man, but I've taught people who don't believe in God, and most people still believe. You know, things happen for a reason. So, you know, I like tell people, you know, like, hey, uh, you think things happen for a reason? And if most people will say yes. Well, there's a reason for that happening. You know, that's kind of how. Well, I- the abortion, the Republican Party platform never was to outlaw abortion. The Republican Party platform, since the the days of of Reagan, overturned Roe v. Wade, which doesn't outlaw abortion. Overturning Roe v. Wade just allows the states to decide. And in some states, there's less abortion. In some states, there's more now. And Donald Trump accomplished what was on the Republican Party platform. He overturned Roe v. Wade and let the states decide. Mission accomplished. It's not even an issue anymore. Yeah, I just want to throw, throw my, in, my, my intake on that. Well, your take is good. I got to run for a break, but thanks for the call, man. Take care. If you're on hold, stand by. Back after this. The cold, hard truth. Delivered warning 6 to 9 right here on The... All right, and it's time to check in with William Youngerman from the offices of William Youngerman Incorporated with the Morning Gold and Precious Metals Report. William Youngerman, how are the metals starting off today? Uh, metals are starting off up after yesterday's nice uh, uh, pullback, which we've been expecting after this big run-up that we've had on gold with no pullback at all. So this gave us a buying opportunity that we've been waiting for yesterday, down $24.20, gold closing out today at $2,157.60, but above the $2,150 support area. The range yesterday, 2150 to 2182 on gold. Silver was down $0.35, cents, closing out today at $24.08. Again, uh, support seeming, seeming to come in around $24 for silver now. Uh, platinum was down $14 at $9.22, and palladium gained $8 yesterday at 1022 This morning, as I said, gold uh, regained from its losses from yesterday up $5.60 right now at $21.63.20. And uh, that's after trading in a range so far today at $2,156 to $2,166. So we're currently at $2,163. Uh, up five dollars and sixty cents. Silver up twenty two cents right now at twenty four dollars and thirty cents the ounce. Platinum gaining four dollars at nine hundred and twenty six dollars, and palladium up twenty four dollars at a thousand forty six. So keep looking for those buying opportunities. Any kind of dips should be bought. Now, when someone's watching the the prices of of gold and silver during the day, and they see a dip, but they can't make it into the into your shop. Can you tell people how they can call you, lock in a price, and get that and get that dip price? Yeah, uh, depending on uh, you, if you have an account with us or not, or if you uh, uh, um, are doing it uh, on what, si- what, what size you're doing, you can simply call us in, lock in the price, uh, wire the money, uh, or tell us you're coming in at such and such a time. If you're a Steve Kane listener, tell us you're a Steve Kane listener. And uh, you can lock it in and, and pick it up the, even the next day. But we usually require same-day pickup. Yeah, and people do that all the time, right? Yes, Absolutely. Abs- you know exactly how much money you bring. That's exactly right. And you're going to be walking out with gold or silver. All right. His, uh, William Youngerman opens up at 10 a.m. His number, 1-800-327-5010. 1-800-327-5010. Online, williamyoungerman.com or stop in. The address, 150 East Palmetto Park Road in Boca on the first floor of the Bank of America building just east of US-1 Federal Highway on the south side of Palmetto Park Road. All right, William Youngerman, we'll talk tomorrow. All right, back after this. The Social Justice Warriors for Breakfast. Now, Steve King. All right. Let's go back to our phones. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? I'm calling from New Hampshire. All right, New Hampshire. What's up? Yeah, I'm just bringing up a point from earlier. It was about the um, the fact that um, that girl, um, Carrie Lake, was, I couldn't even think of the name, but Carrie Lake was, um, I don't know, like positioned um, to take her out. They didn't want her in in the Senate. I think that's kind of what's going on right now. You're talking about cinema. Yeah, no, not cinema. When they tried to bribe to. Um, oh, they tried to bribe Carrie Lake. Yes, 
not to get into the Senate. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's going on right now. It's a possibility. It's what I'm thinking, that maybe they're trying, the Democrats are trying to find someone that they can buy off and not. Well, they already have. Um, that that race was a three-way race. The incumbent senator in Arizona is Cinema, and she um, was not very popular with Republicans, so she became an independent. She was running as an independent for, for her Senate seat. There's a Democrat nominee in Carrie Lake, so so the Democrat vote would be split between Cinema and the Democrat, and and Carrie Lake had it locked up. They got they got Cinema to drop out. So they bought off cinema. So now it's Carrie Lake versus the Democrats. So now it's a very tough race for Carrie Lake in Arizona right now. Well, that's what I'm, I'm worried about. I think that they're trying to trade off. Like if she gets in, that's what they're worried about. So they're going to try to get someone else to come. They're terrified of her. They're terrified is right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I appreciate the call. Take care of that baby. Thank you. All right. Take care. Take it. You know, this thing about Carrie Lake, and I'll, and I'll tell you, um, that that race for Carrie Lake, when the vote was split three ways, because the Democrat, remember, Cinema was a Democrat. She became an independent. And then the Democrat running, the Democrat vote would have been split. Carrie Lake would have walked into that Senate seat. Now that they got um, Cinema to drop out, who knows? They promised her one of these fake jobs. I don't know, Boeing president of a college. She does teach college classes. Who knows? But they bought her off with something. She's out. And I, I love Carrie Lake. And I know you guys do too. But Carrie Lake has made two mistakes. One in this race and one in the last one. And you, you, this, the one she did in this race, you may not agree with me, but this is, this is the mistake she made. But the, fir the first campaign... And this just comes with experience. And I love Carrie Lake. You, you heard me interview Carrie Lake. I mean, it was, it, you know, I mean, I love Carrie Lake. But she's, a, she's an amateur when it comes to politics and how these people operate. And, and when people are new, they, they do things. In her first race, she did a press conference. And a reporter asked her, what, what, what do you say about McCain supporters, you know, the late McCain? She says, don't vote for me. We don't want you. Big mistake. Because everybody pretty much... In Arizona, that's a Republican voted for John McCain at some point because he's been in, he was in Congress forever, right? That was a mistake. But the the, the mistake she made, and this shouldn't I don't know. It's hard to say this is a mistake, but what happened with Carrie Lake this time is when she when that bribe tape came out, and that's when they said we got to stop her. We got to stop her. She doesn't, you know, when that, when that bribe, t when she turned down that bribe, that didn't do it. But when she, when the tape went public, that's when they said, that's when they went and got cinema out of it. And the chances of Carrie, I mean, I can't, I can't give you false hope. I mean, you know, don't, you're going to get mad at me for saying this. The chances of her winning in Arizona are so slim, getting them buying off cinema and getting her out. And what they're terrified about with, uh, with Carrie Lake is, like Donald Trump, she doesn't take bribes, she can't be controlled. If she made it to the Senate, she would probably be either our nominee in 2028 or 2032, because she's not old, she's young. And they know that, they see that far out. She cannot be controlled. You know, she when she quit her, this is something you understand about Carrie Lake. When she quit her television job, she was number one anchor in, in local news in all of Arizona. These local news people and that are big local news people make more money than some of the national people make. They make a lot of money. It's a big job. When she quit her job at that local Fox affiliate, she had no idea she was going to become this superstar that she is now. Okay? She took a big financial risk when she did that. And she was probably the, the, the larger earner in her marriage, too. So she, her, her, her and her husband took a big financial risk. And she's a superstar. We all love her. But because they can't buy her off, they can't control her. You know, when you listen to that bribe tape, you could tell that the guy that, the, that um, Paul Ryan and McConnell sent to bribe her, he was in shock that she didn't take the bribe. In fact, he thought, and you hear it, in the, if you guys go online and find the tape, he thought that it was a negotiation tactic, she, that she was trying to get them to increase the bribe to not run. Remember? 
So that's when they decided we this can't be allowed. She's like, we can't, we got to stop her. So her, her chance, and I know this is not a popular thing to say, but I'm not going to lie to you. The chances of her winning are slim. That doesn't mean she's not going to win. She's hugely popular. I love her. You love her. We all love Carrie Lake. President Trump loves her. But, you know, she she's like Trump. It, you know, after Trump, there's a handful of people that they really want to stop. She's at the top of the list, right? Because next to Trump, she's probably the most popular MAGA politician in the country, okay? And when she can't be bought, when they try to buy her, she goes public, she can't be controlled, they can't have that. So n next to Trump, she's number, number two to stop. And Trump at this point is unstoppable, so they are going to they are dedicating a lot of resources to stopping Kerry Lake. Doesn't mean she can't win. It just means it's going to be much more difficult to win this time than even the first time. That's it. I mean, it's it's sad, you know. It's sad. I I think she's great. She's in the wrong state. You know. I mean, if she if she were in the Senate, think about this for four years. By the time the next presidential election comes around, she'd be primed for it, primed for it. And, and I think she would be perfect, Carrie Lake, as the first female president, a real strong, tough woman. And they know that. You know, one of the reasons that they go after Trump as hard as they do is not just to stop him personally. They want to stop other people like him that they can't control coming up through the ranks. And um, Carrie Lake, phew. you know, a lot, there's been, a, there's, there's been uh, other presidents that were in the Senate for, for less than a term that became uh, president. Look at Obama. How long was Obama in the Senate when he got elected? Two years? All right. Let's see. Do we have time? Yeah, we'll try. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Carrie Lake. What was the adjective you, uh, oh, great. Yeah, she's great. Brian, you are absolutely out of your gourd if you think that Kerry Lake would win any presidential election at all. Okay, at all. Mm. Why? Why you, you have a you have a problem with with hot, sexy, tough women? I guess. There he is. Well, I, I imagine you have a lifetime of being rejected by women like that. Yeah. Well, no, no, not it's not really a problem. Uh, disgusting is more like it. And you know what? what women are disgusted by you? I could understand that. The, the, the election denier. Yeah. And she doesn't get a break. Yeah. They just keep running. I don't, I don't know why. Mm. Yeah. They can't get a break. They just keep running. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 so you, so do you have a girlfriend or a wife? Why are you always pivot? I'm not pivoting. I want to just you, you call a lot. Do you, do you have a girlfriend or a wife? Oh my gosh! How, I'm in a relationship. What kind of relationship? What kind of relationship? Yeah, well, Brian. What 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 is their what's their first name? What's their first name? Hey, my endorsement. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. What 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 what's yeah? No no, couldn't even think of the first name. He's in a relationship. Yeah. With his right hand. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Brian from Deerfield. Oh, hey, Brian. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. Know, the thing when they see Terry Lane, they hit the, they hit the panic mode right off the bat. Mm -hmm. Cracked a woman who's going to be there for a number of years. She's got, she's a very young person. She's got longevity going for her. And they got nobody to deal with her on the Democratic side, male or female. They're already trying to buy someone off from political office who hasn't even won a political mm -hmm. yet. That's right. That's how panic they are. Um, she's, I mean, she, next, to, next to Trump, she's the best. And, and, and when you talk about it, she, to me, if she made it to the Senate, four years in the Senate, she'd be primed to be the nominee in, in 2028. Absolutely. And they know that. And they have nobody in the ballpen on the other side. Not even close. No. Not even close. She, uh, she's got an incredible career ahead of her. Whether she wins or not, I, I still think she's got a career. 
versus a guy like Mayor Pete. I saw him, remember when they had that track, that train derailment in, in Ohio at that city? Mm-hmm. I remember him seeing going down there, meeting with the locals there on a, on a, on interviews. That you can see this guy was clueless as to what to do and what. Be- do you know? You know? I know everyone says he looks like Alfred E. Newman, but he you you, you may be. I don't know if you're old enough to remember this. He looks like those characters uh, in the Thunderbirds. Remember those puppets? I think so, yeah. Yeah, the Tracy family. You know the Tracy? He looks like one of the Tracy families. Yeah. All right, take, I got I, That's true. That's, that's true. All right, I got to go on. Thanks for the call. All right, we'll be back tomorrow. My name is Brian Craig. This is the Steve Kane Show, Florida's longest running radio show. See you tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. All right, guys, I got to run. Make sure you subscribe if you're new and everyone else like the video if you're already subscribed. All right.